You're listening to the The Morning After podcast. Don't walk into a sex party like that. They're going to kick you out. Well, fortunately, I don't really go to a lot of sex parties. Lamar. Tell a, me about that. A lot what, of what them? is your life like? They never let me in because I always come in too ready. Hot? Yeah. <laughs> too wanting? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> too hungry? Is this where they're doing it? Mm. <laughs> We're talking it's about the sex noises, parties. I think, that really sets them off. Yeah. It's not so much that you want it. It's like when you start going. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know how else, I don't know the, how right to act on these guys. Yeah. yeah. There we go. You gotta believe in yourself. I love that I got a. Yeah, I love that I got a. I asked for a coffee and you gave me a t- <laughs> toilet full of. I Listen. What I'm sure is delicious coffee. I don't know. It's but I love the froth on the top. Kind of gives it a pooey look. Listen, that's, that's great. You got to skip. I hope off we're some recording all this. Oh, yeah, we oh, are. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We don't. We don't waste anything. No, no, no. But don't be. A, don't be afraid to drink it. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna be afraid to drink your poopy coffee. Yeah, I, it's I good for you. Tried to make it look like a heart, but now it just looks like a butt. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but that kind of makes sense. Drinking ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From a toilet. As long as it's good ass. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all had bad ass. Um, let me see. <sighs> Uh, Kyle, what did uh, what did you do? Oh, oh, I almost spilled all over them. That's okay. What did you do? Uh, what did I do? I went to a party. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, being the sober one at a party at a bar is not very fun. It's not fun. No, no. I just avoid it. It's at tough. That point. Yeah, and I noticed like, oh, there's the one old guy who's like super drunk and weird and. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just felt strange. Wait, wait. Were you the old guy? No, no, no. no. This guy was old. Oh, the drunk and weird, not the sober and weird. No, no, no. This guy was old. He was like 41 or something. Um, (laughs) Whoa, whoa, I mean, no, no, no. He was old. He was like 60 something. I'm like, why are you here? (laughs) Listen, 60 year olds got a party too. That's true. That's true. It's true. You know, my mom came home one time and she was a little tipsy. My mom doesn't drink like at all. And so she she came to LA to visit and she was, my mom's 69 years old, right? 69. 69. <laughs> but I was shocked when mom came home and she was and she was a little loopy. Mm. I was like, mom, what are you? Wait, what when, was, when was this? This was like a couple years ago. This is a couple years ago. She was probably like 67 at the oh. time. And she came to LA to visit. And Alicia, my sister, she got she took her out. I think it was Marisol as well, I think. They took my mom out. My mom comes home just talking all kinds of crazy. <laughs> and I was like, Mom, let me ask you a question. He's like, What? Are you drunk? You've been drinking. <laughs> she said, I only had a little bit of wine. I said, how much wine did my mama have? <laughs> they were like, we've been drinking, okay? Yeah. And I was shocked that my mom was out there with these kids out there getting lit. In the street. In yeah, the I've been street. drinking in the morning. I go to your room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has you never seen your mom drink ever? Never. Oh, wow. That's I, I saw my mom drink. All the time. <laughs> that it would be odd for me not to see my mom drinking. Uh, really? Then, oh yeah, no. Is there something you want to unpack? No. Oh, well, listen, I wrote a whole book about all of my trauma and all of the <laughs> therapy that I went to. So if you uh, really want to deep dive into that, you're more than welcome to go listen or read, uh, listen to or read Radical Love. I encourage anybody out there if you're going through a mental health journey, which we all are, uh, and you want to learn a little bit more about how to be patient and love yourself. Be patient with and love yourself and others. I mm-hmm. I would encourage you. By the way, if it's not my book, then go read some books. Go some read books. things yeah. that will help you to go in that journey because it's, it's the most important thing. Everything that we struggle with in our life, if you really root it down, like all the way to the bottom, mm-hmm. it's some issue where we are not truly fully loving ourselves mm. and then therefore making it very difficult for us to learn how to love others and be there for others because we're all dickheads. You know, yeah. like everybody is absolutely struggling with a whole bunch of unhealed trauma on some level. And this is where we all collide and hit each other and, and rub. And it's all the issues that we deal with, whether it's romantic or just completely, you know, platonic and friendships and family and whatever, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say almost everything essentially, you know, it's, it's all rooted down in there. But my mom, Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, to go from joking around about Mm -hmm. parents drinking, but just to, you know, to, tangent us for a second yeah my mom you know she grew up a lot of our parents grew up in a world where the idea of therapy was oh, still, what? Yeah. i mean it was a yeah. joke still i mean really still it was a joke it, 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 you know every movie that we watched growing up as kids mm-hmm. there'd be the you know if there was a character that was going to a therapist Ther- it, 
they were crazy or <laughs> yes. it was a big joke like oh so and so is going to the shrink mm -hmm. and so that was the world that our mm -hmm. parents you know grew up in and our grand and, and even more removed were our grandparents and you mm -hmm. keep going farther back and the more removed they were from it and so we really benefit we live in this incredible time where things have you know, slowly but surely been built on those shoulders of Freud and Carl Jung and all of mm -hmm. these people who have really been unpacking all these big ideas. But my mom, unfortunately, was a brilliant woman, mm -hmm. but it, none of that stuff was really stuff that people talked about deeply, deeply, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, or the, where people were trying, but it wasn't really mainstream, and you were still kind of like, eh, you were broken or whatever, if you, which we all kind of are. But yeah, dude, she did, she did not know how to love herself, and she did not know that. And so booze is one of the first easiest things that we yeah. reach for because it's, it's good. Because it, <laughs> it's good. It tastes good. I want to get burnt. <laughs> um, listen, man, I do love me some booze, but, um, but that's, I think, part of the problem is when you realize, oh, yeah, I kind of like this too much. Too yeah. much booze. I'm reaching for this too much because it just, like, takes the edge off. And we tell ourselves, this is how we rationalize. It takes the edge off. It loosens it up. It's like, and it's not untrue. Right. It does do that. I wish there was another thing that we could have that wasn't just straight poison that took mm. the edge off. People are like trying to push these new things like kava root. And I don't know if you've seen these little blue bottles. Of oh, like, yeah, um, yeah. You know. Blue vervain. Is that what, is that one of them? I, I don't know. I don't know. Vi but there, there are these. Vi okay. Yeah, and that, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's a whole other type of self-medication. Definitely takes the edge off. Yeah. Uh, well, doesn't it put the edge on? Doesn't it? Yeah, but the edge, you get nervous sometimes in my age that if you're going to perform oh. it, it doesn't work. But if you get the blue, oh, sure. you get, takes the edge off, takes the, the, oh, the pressure you. away. Because I know you. I'm about to be yeah. about to be on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's just, I'm only speaking for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Not yeah, anybody yeah, yeah, else of course. in here. Because I've never had that problem yeah, before. Yeah, never. No, never. You know Certainly what's weird not. about the, the therapist thing you bring up? <laughs> Seeing it in movies, like you said, one of the first times I saw it where it was kind of like a machismo type guy doing it was... Tony Soprano in The Sopranos. Sure, yeah. yeah. And you're like, wait, this... Isn't like, that incredible? Yeah, like super tough, like super macho guy is going to therapy. And then mm -hmm. it was just weird now thinking back at it. You got to <laughs> wait, you got to introduce it. You haven't even done an introduction yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to another episode of The La Morning After podcast. To my right, I have my uh, esteemed colleague, Kyle the Legend Chevron. Folks, we have a very special guest here today. Um, this is unprecedented territory that we are in right now. We are witnessing greatness before our very eyes. For the first time ever, a superhero is drinking out of a toilet, and we've got it on camera. <laughs> you know, dude, I hate to break it to you, but Christopher Reeves hit some real low spots in his life. And uh, there was, no, I guarantee Christopher never drank out of a toilet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us today none other than Zachary. Levi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Yes, thank you. You like thank Zachary or Zach? Uh, Zach, Zachary, schmucko, poopy pants. Just don't call me late for dinner. That's what my daddy always used to say. <laughs> <laughs> we met, where do we meet? We, I, I, In your dreams, Lamorne. Probably. Initially. Probably. Yeah. Well, you're a huge star, man. And I, I No, we didn't. Know. We met, I think actually we met auditioning. I really? Think, I think the very first time you and I might have met was just around in the the circuit, you know. Mm. Uh, you we're, were old. We're old enough that we were a part of what Hollywood used to be yes. in that regard, right? Yeah. Now, and I guess maybe now because of the strikes and maybe people are starting to go back to casting a, or casting offices again in the mm -hmm. same way. But I mean, I'm 44 this year. Okay, 41. And. Same. I started to same same yeah, same. same same yeah y'all same same same, same. Um, same but I started auditioning in ninety eight ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine and I was eighteen at the time and there was no uh, this, this, we're gonna go back in time <laughs> uh, there was no you know Google Maps mm -hmm. or anything obviously so uh, in fact there wasn't even I think MapQuest was just starting to be a Map thing Quest. I had a Thomas guide I had Ooh. a full on you had the book. Oh, map, the book, the book of Thomas Guide that you would flip to, like you'd go into the back of it to look up names of streets and be like, oh, I'm looking for, you know, this address, uh, you know, yeah. where we're at right now. I'd have to go yeah. find it in the index in the back. Wow. And then it would tell me in the grid, you're looking for page, you know, uh, 350 mm -hmm. and, uh, and on the grid, like A8. And then you'd mm -hmm. go find it. And then yeah. you'd have to figure out how to get to what that yeah. was, which, by the way, was a great way to learn the city, too. Like with now that we have everything automated, nobody yeah. knows where the hell they are yeah. ever. I don't they're, know where I'm going. They're ever. so stuck using these things. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I know LA pretty well because I had to learn it. But did, then, did you have to look up this address here? Did you just show up? 
No, I I mapped it, and but you know, oh, with, okay. with modern technology. Okay, <laughs> I remember I remember MapQuest. My dad would take drive me to like soccer tournaments and whatnot, mm-hmm. and he'd MapQuest print it out. Yeah, yeah. He'd always have eight out of the eleven pages, <laughs> and then like one page would get coffee spilt on it, and then he'd be like, you know, we're, we'll We're gonna it wing out. it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> figure it out. I'd always show up like, sorry, you didn't make the, the team, second son. half. Yeah, we're gonna wing it. <laughs> so that's just funny. Um, I remember that. But yeah, so like I think um, <clears throat> you know, like the system used to be, we'd all be running around going to auditions yeah. all the time, and particularly during pilot season, that's Ooh. when you would run into everybody. Oh, you'd yeah. run into everyone you're competing against. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Every single dude that was of my type and archetype and whatever, we'd all know each other. And then of course there was always all the other roles in all the other shows. Right. And so no doubt we cross paths in casting offices and you know what you know studio and network testing and whatever it was i don't know because i uh, i moved out here in 08 yeah and for the first year and a half i would say i wasn't auditioning for anything well, and, and i was on chuck at the time so maybe we didn't yeah, yeah. you when i moved out here i already you were already you know the billboards of you mm. already yeah, yeah. um so huh. i you know but I, I i think i have an idea of where we met tell me your house you had a game night. Oh. And I was invited to a game night. Yeah. By. That tracks. It might have been Zoe or somebody. I don't remember. It, was it wasn't Zoe because I didn't really know Zoe until okay. more recently. Okay. It was someone that I worked with that you were friends with. And we had a game night at your house. Gotcha. And I remember that's the first time I ever played running charades. Yeah. And Oof. it's a fun game. It's so fun. It's such a, a fun game. Did we, we played Mafia that, that night, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you had played that, Mafia before. That might have been the first time I played Mafia. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Have I, you played since? I'm sure you played. Oh, since. I play all the time. Oh, okay. Dude, great. in Mafia, he always says I'm the killer. Like, he always tries to convince the group I'm the killer. And how often are you the, one like, of the Mafia? Like 20% of the time. All right. Look so 24, 20, 20% of the time, he's correct. I mean, that's yeah. not too bad. <laughs> Look at him. But like, even before the game starts, he's like, oh, Kyle's the killer. Yeah, Kyle's a murderer. Because and Kyle, like, switches up his energy in a weird way. Because like, yeah. I know him very well. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, Kyle will just have his chest out and shit, yeah, yeah. his shirt all open, and then go, you're the killer. No, I'm the doctor. <laughs> by the I'm way, the by the way, I'm, um, I've already shot a, a pilot for it, but I'm turning Mafia into a game show. Ooh. And running charades. And really? the idea is to, because you know I've been trying to build a studio out of my ranch in Texas. Yeah. So the idea is, is breaking on the Le- morning yeah, after. Let's go. <laughs> so so I'm going to build my first soundstage out there, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to do I'm going to do a podcast for Sick. myself, like a talk show podcast. Mm-hmm. But then also uh, do running charades and do mafia uh, on that in that soundstage, and we'll do it on the weekends, so people can fly in, hang out for like a long weekend in Austin. You'll come out, we'll play some mafia and stuff, and then you go home, and then we'll have all that stuff. Dude, that's dope, man! Fun, right? Yeah. That is dope, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would probably dominate. You because when wish. The, well, when the lights are the brightest, that's when Daddy shows up. Oh, that's is when that right? Competition. I'm there, Daddy. Bro. Do you have any idea? By the way, I hate that I just called you Daddy. Called Daddy. Uh, yeah, wait, hold on. Mm, what just happened? Yeah. Grandpa, do you know? <laughs> Granddad, uh, do you know how much? immense mafia talent exists in this town i mean i'm sure you played with a lot of good players yeah but there are really me kyle we're not even in this conversation because i'm on um, another level yeah a whole other <laughs> okay, cool. yeah, yeah you're like it. you know it. it's like why would we even because you're obviously always winning the tom brady yep the okay, the, cool. the g-o-a-t <laughs> of m-a-f-i-a um <clears throat> no there are so many like legitimately scary Scary good players. We played. Time. We played fairly recently. Mm. Uh, Trevor Noah had a game night at his house, and Ella Belinsky was there. Mm. I had ne- I had never seen a mafia player like her. Uh, wait, yeah. is Ella um, who was in Charlie's Angel? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I know yeah. Ella. Um, I feel like I've played mafia with her in Atlanta when we were all quite possibly. Maybe. She is oh, like no, a, she is a like scary a wizard. She's it like, is strange. Yeah. yeah, she's like a real detective. You sure she's not cheating? No, no, dude, no. She saved I'm, me. Ella, I'm not saying you're a cheater. I'm just saying no, there are a me. lot of people. I have met a lot of people throughout the years who everyone thought, oh my God, they have this like incredible intuition and they're so good at like knowing. But then years later, it would come out somehow that they, they were, were like, cheating. That they oh, were peeking. Geez. I know. And it's oh, so sad. Peaking. It's so sad because it's like, why would anyone. It just defeats the whole purpose of the game. Yeah. yeah. Why are you opening your eyes? Like, either play the game or don't play the game. Right. But don't cheat in the game. You're stealing everyone else's enjoyment from it. I don't, you know how I know she's not cheating? 
Because when I'm cheating, I don't think Ellen I don't see her looking. <laughs> 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 because there was one particular part where we were uh, we were townspeople. Yeah, she was the last one standing, mm -hmm. and she just kind of ran through and picked the part. Wait, wait, she was the last mafia standing. She was the no, she was, she was the, the last. La no, there people? was like two killers two. left, her and one other person, and she scoped out the two remaining killers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was embarrassingly it was really good. Crazy, yeah. It was like, oh, this 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 lady's a wizard. Yeah. Well, but how? See, interesting because that just means she was playing with really poor mafia. If there was only four people left, there were two mafia left. All mm -hmm. they needed to do was first and second, and then run the game. Yeah, I don't remember what they were doing. Yeah, yeah they were clearly trash. not playing well. Mm, probably not. Clearly not. Question for you: You mentioned that in back in the day, pilot season time. That's when you were were oh. oh Oh, eight? No, you were 18. You were 18. I was 18, were 18. In, in 99. Were you I, acting before that? A theater. Mm. It was all theater. I grew up... The theater. The theater. Yes. I was... When, I, when my awareness and consciousness kind of came online, which I think happens for all of us around three or four, like mm -hmm. prior to that, you're just bumping into walls and doing yeah. life and whatever. The cigarettes. Um, is that what you looked like when you were Yeah, I just couldn't two? keep my you head up. Just, I was just uh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the heroin nod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, where's the hey, let me do that pipe. <laughs> um, but like right around three, four, or whatever, when my awareness came online, I, I like, I knew, knew, knew three things. I knew there was a God. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to be an actor. Not I wanted to be an actor, mm. like I was going to be. Very, mm. very strangely, but I knew. And I also knew that I was going to go build communities. Like community was going to be a huge part of what my life was going to be. And that was kind of really triggered. triggered triggled. Mm -hmm. um, Rob Riggled? Rob, Rob Riggled, <laughs> yeah. We should totally somehow figure out how to verb him. Um, <laughs> oh, I wriggled that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but like, I, I don't know if you guys can tap into this moment maybe, uh, but close your eyes and think about the very first time. Close your eyes. You sure? Close your eyes. They're closed. I'm not going to touch you inappropriately. I'll oh, touch you very fuck. appropriately. Do it again? But imagine, uh, try to think back the very first time you ever saw a cul-de-sac. Mm, yes, I remember. You're a little kid and you're looking at this thing that is a cul-de-sac and you're like, what is this thing? Mm. Mm -hmm. And you think to yourself, this is dope. This is the cool, this is a little neighborhood in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I want all my friends and family to live in this place. Mm. Oh, you can open your eyes now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for going on that journey with me. Yes. So when I had that moment as a three, four-year-old, whatever, I was like, oh, yeah, community. I get this. And I think it's evolutionary. I think it's something that exists in all of us because we know where we all came from. We came from tribe. We came from community. Right. We came from even circularly. We came from this thing. Mm. And it represents warmth and, and sustenance and mm. safety and protection and growth and all of the things that what it means to have a human experience a beautiful organic human experience in this existence and i think at four i was like bah, 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 bah. like all these things were kind of like tapping in so then i didn't know what an actor was but a couple years later so i was just a ham i would just entertain people because also around four i knew that one uh a uh a a I could now, before that, I didn't know that I could intentionally make someone laugh mm. because at two, three, you're bumping into walls and people yeah. laugh and you go, yeah. what did I do? I don't know what I did. <laughs> but then once your awareness comes on, you're like, oh, I can do this little thing or say this little thing. I can, you know, whatever. And that will evoke this laughter, this smile in a human. Mm -hmm. And at around that same age, you're emotionally intelligent enough to know that a laughing, smiling person feels good on the inside. And I was hooked. That was like, oh, yeah. mainline that. Mm -hmm. drug forever right. them nods in. Right. and get them that's right uh yeah. and then a few years later i put together oh that's the tv and there's people on that tv they're pretending mm -hmm. to be other people for these laughs i mean looking at john ritter and three's company and being like mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta go trip over couches i gotta go yeah. do that that's and crazy then, you had this awareness <laughs> oh bro yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. young yeah but again i think it was because i really and i do believe i think that when we come down into this experience mm -hmm. we there's like we almost chose the mission, almost like a video game. Almost. Yeah. It's like, I like, okay, there's going to be a life and I can choose that path. And it's not going to be exact. There's, we still have free will and all of this stuff. Yeah. But I think that there was like a mission to it. And the mission was, okay, you're going to go down and you're going to go be an actor and you're going to go use that to build some kind of a platform to then use for good in the world and maybe hopefully build community with that platform and help mm -hmm. people and bring people, people closer to themselves, each other and God. Like that was your whole package of a mission. Mm. And so I think that's why every time things continue to kind of like tick off in my life and as I keep going toward them, they're more validated and confirmed. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm on the right path. I'm going where I'm supposed to go. Right. Yeah. When, I, when you had me close my eyes and think of the first cul-de-sac, yeah. 
I thought of one and mm. I was like, cool. Then I thought, have I ever lived in a cul-de-sac? And the answer is yes. Mm. My house in Chicago Same. is in a cul-de-sac and I don't talk to none of them motherfuckers. <laughs> well, <laughs> none of them. Right. But that's because you didn't know them going into that, nor mm -hmm. did you really feel like you needed to know them. Maybe right. they weren't the same vibe, but imagine a cul-de-sac that isn't just a cul-de-sac, but an entire neighborhood. Yeah. But if people that are of all, let's say, similar vibe and intention and philosophy what? and ethos. No. Oh. <laughs> it's just a long Jesus way. Christ. Yeah. I understand. I mean, we don't live that, in cul-de-sacs. I understand <laughs> that you are a very funny and intelligent human being. <laughs> But not everything has to go to a joke. Lamorne yeah. for crying in the night. Yeah, it does. It's called the Lamorning After, motherfucker. <laughs> we do what I say. Is that is that is that uh, the Lamorning After means it's a comedy? It means it always has to be a yeah. joke. You see my name in it? Yeah. You see these awards? Yeah. Yeah. You laugh. Yeah. Two thousand four. <laughs> oh, is that two thousand fifteen? That's what that is. Yeah. That's okay. what that means, baby. Right. Listen, I listen. I totally get it. I totally understand. You're stupid. You want to get deep. You're stupid. But sometimes people want to get deep, and then over here we want to get balls deep, low hanging fruit. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, totally. I, we could play both. Let's yes and. We Let's could go. play we could we could we could play both, man. Uh, which remind anyway. this which reminds me we polled the uh the fans. We love polling the fans. Poll them. Yeah, we yeah. love polling them. And we asked them specific questions because we knew you were going to be a guest. Mm -hmm. And they sent their questions in. And we're going to ask you those questions. Love it. Let's do it. Hopefully it will spark other things and we can veer off and we can we, we can get deep again. Sure. Well, it just we haven't we literally haven't tied a bow on half a dozen topics already because yeah. we keep veering. Yes, <laughs> that's the la morning after. Hey, yeah. actually, actually never I grew up on a cul-de-sac. I grew what up that? on a cul-de-sac called Apple Tree Court, mm -hmm. um, and we played mafia. Okay, the whole town. Well, no, you I'm just you we lived, <laughs> well, you lived in Jersey, so I'm assuming you played real mafia. <laughs> That's true. Track suits and all. <laughs> hey, forget about it. First time it. I met a, uh, a member of the mafia, I lived in Jersey, and there was a guy in my elevator in my building, not joking, wearing a track suit. And he had two bigger guys with him. And I got in the elevator, and he was there, and immediately I tensed up because I knew what time it was. And I see him, and he goes, he looks at me, and he goes, how you doing? <laughs> I was like, good. And he, then I st stood there in the corner awkwardly, and he's like, you can relax. And I was like, oh, okay. He okay, told cool. you that you could relax? Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey. And then when I got off the elevator, he goes, take it easy. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my brush with death. <laughs> and I was like, I almost just got whacked. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we polled the fans. Now, um, actually, this one is a question that is similar to you. You already discussed it. Ah. Um, uh, if you could play any video game character in live action, who would you pick? Anyone? Hmm. Well, for a long time, that would have been Nathan Drake uh, from Uncharted. I mm. loved the Uncharted games, or at least the first couple. I can't, I don't, I think I play, I certainly played the first two. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I played the third one. Maybe I did, but um, it's such a great franchise. And in fact, I played the first one and I immediately reached out to Naughty Dog, the company that made it. Really? And, oh, yeah. I was like, uh, and I don't even remember what year this was, whenever that first one came out. Um, and I reached out to them. I was like, uh, who's got the, does anybody have the film rights for this? And they're like, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, you know, we just sold them to Arya Rod. I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't, I still haven't seen the movie with Tom Wahlberg. Holland and, and Wahlberg. And Mark um, Wahlberg. Yeah. But, but, um, but that based, I mean, you know, Tom plays a much younger version of the character in the games. Mm -hmm. It's almost like prequel-ish. Um, but that really would have been a fun role to play. They really yeah. kind of modeled, modeled it after Nathan Fillion, though. If you look at the character of Nathan Drake, like he kind of looks like Nathan Fillion uh, in a lot of ways. Um, but that role, I don't know. I don't know. I, like to be honest, like a lot of the games that I love playing are a bunch of first-person shooters or yeah. adventure games that I don't really see myself as that particular character so mm -hmm. much. Like I don't know, like Master Chief and Halo. I don't, mm. you know, I, right. I wouldn't. I Pablo don't. Schreiber. Yeah, exactly. But you, you, so you, but you've played a, a, a multitude of characters and a, and a lot of cool CGI stuff as well. But with that, that it's a lot of technical stuff you have to do: harnesses yeah. and green screens. And yeah. Do you do you still enjoy that as much as just doing straight up one on one scene work? I don't know that I would say I'd enjoy it as much. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it's important that we try to enjoy everything that we're doing because mm -hmm. if we're not actively intentionally trying to 
And hopefully we're, we get good enough at this that it, it's not, you don't have to try so hard because you're just being more grateful all the time. So even when I'm imp on the harness, that is very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've done some harness work before, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I You know, I mean, it's cutting into all the places you don't want it to cut into. And you can be up there in those, on those wires for a long time because mm. sometimes people forget that you're up in those wires. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, but still, like, because of those things, you get to come across as a superhero who's flying around in the world. Or, uh, you know, when I was doing Chuck, and sometimes Chuck would actually be in a harness because he's rappelling down a building. It's like... This is the coolest shit ever. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like who gets to do this stuff? Yeah. So I try to find the enjoyment in all that. But as an actor, I don't know that there's anything more enjoyable than actually ju just like for a perfect example in Shazam 2, Shazam Fury of the Gods. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of fun stunt stuff that we got to do. And me being in harnesses, either flying or getting like, you know, yanked across a thing or, you know, whatever, like even all that stuff, it can be real fun. But to have a tete-a-tete -tete scene between me and Helen Mirren, Dame yeah. Helen Mirren, yeah, where we're sitting at a table uh, where I am this, you know, 17-year-old kid inside trying to have bravado and, like, yeah. negotiate this hostage exchange yeah. <laughs> while I have brought sandwiches to the table. <laughs> and she's this goddess from, you know, time immemorium who's... Mm very, you know, regal and mm -hmm. all this. And the two of us having this three and a half page tete-a-tete -tete mm -hmm. was one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done in my entire life as an actor. Oh, wow. You know, and then also, as you know, like, and, I, and I've, you know, seen some of the clips from your show that you were talking to um, Jake or talking to, um, you know, Glassman and, t you know, you guys are talking about improv and like mm -hmm. when you get to be in a scene with another actor who really understands comedy and understands improv comedy and you can just riff. Go. Yeah, yeah, just go. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That, that is the most so fun. fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It's so fulfilling. Which, and then contrastly, if you're in a scene that really could be a lot of fun, but you're working with an actor who might be a, a decent actor, but does not understand improv, oh, it's the wettest blanket ever. You're like, the worst. Uh, 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 yeah, how do we They're just, just so dry. I don't know what to do. With yeah, them. you know, it's, they're, it, I mean, it's, it's, not the, it's not just that they're dry. It's more so that... When you're playing in, in this game, there is a place to go. There, mm. you, you find the game and what yeah. it is you two are yeah. doing, and yeah. you just ride that game yeah. until the wheels fall off and let the editors do what they do. Yeah. Yeah. But there have been moments where I would go, well, I'd change a line slightly, but it still sets you up quite nicely with the cue line, and the other actor just stares like this. Yeah. Because they don't know what to do. Uh, he, he didn't say the line right. He didn't say his line. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and, also, and ultimately, I think that that's indicative of an actor who still needs to dig deeper into the process of what it means to actually be a character. Yeah. Mm. Because it's not just a matter of learning these lines. Although, depending on the piece, like, um, you know, I like, I like there being some wiggle room. I like, I like being able to, like, here's the words. I understand the words. I understand the intention of the character, what I'm supposed to do in this scene, mm. and, and that there is a give and take, and I'm responsible for cueing the other person's intentions and all that stuff. Like that's a, absolutely, but then to be able to, you know, if to, to, to make slight changes in the line in order to make them more your voice or the character's voice or whatever it is, I like that. But also I like working on things where the writers are so intentional about yeah. what they're writing mm -hmm. that it's, it's, it's prose. I mean, it's like they're yeah. really writing something special. When I was on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, um, Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino, the writer, director, producers of that show, who are wonderful human beings and I think genius level talent, they do not let you veer from those words. Mm -hmm. They want you to say those words exactly the way that they have been written because they put a lot of intention into it. Mm -hmm. There's a cadence to it. And you can hear it. You can see it. There's something melodic almost. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a melody. There's a, there's a, a cadence to it. Mm -hmm. and, then all, and all those lines go together in that cadence. So it's important to say it like that. And that's a real fun challenge too. But when you are allowed, when there's more area, mm. to, particularly in comedies and to kind of fuck around and, and improv, if you're as an actor, if you're working with an actor and there's just about what the line is, you're like, well, that's not, you're not actually being a character. You're just saying lines in this and, and holding a pose. Mm, right. That's a two dimensional version of what we could be doing right yeah. now, as opposed to, you know, and we hear it all the time. Acting is reacting. Yeah. Acting is reacting which means you're listening and whatever your scene partner says right. then you run with yeah. and sometimes with improv i like to even just do dramatic improv mm -hmm. it not even just comedic we're you know sometimes comedic improv can can and maybe i don't know if you can speak to this but can be a little bit of um 
a pain in the ass when you're in a situation where everyone's just trying to be the punchline. And it's like, yeah, if, if everyone's funny, just trying to find be, the, be the funny one in the scene, but if you're just yeah. doing dramatic improv, mm -hmm. like it's actually one of my favorite movies I've ever seen, no joke. And I think that they really crushed it. Um, uh, Jake and um, uh, um, mm, 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 Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. In Drinking Buddies. Drinking Buddies. Oh, Drinking mm -hmm. Buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. loved that movie. Mostly improvised. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it wasn't just, let's go find a punchline improv. Yeah. It was, no. let's go find a scene. Yeah. Let's go be two human beings, re find, mm -hmm. you know, being real human beings in these characters that are not Jake mm -hmm. and Olivia, but, uh, you know, or Jake and Olivia adjacent because you yeah. can still see so much of them in that. But yeah. that's with all of our roles. Mm -hmm. And you can, and then just go, let's go live in that scene and find mm -hmm. these moments. I was, I loved it. Yeah. I told him that. I, I've, I've met Jake a few times over the years, but I, we did Corden together years ago. You were disappointed. And I, I, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all, man. I think he's so talented. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, but I particularly, I, I told him, I was like, man, I just, I loved that movie. I think what you guys did was so pure and so mm -hmm. fun. It's a little movie. I mean, it's not, you know, but it, yeah. it really, I think is an example of what we as actors can do if given that kind of sandbox to play in. And if we really dedicate to it and Olivia and Jake, fucking did that and they did great let me ask you a question uh, um playing kurt warner yeah. for example you're playing a real person who was there on set yeah uh, I'm, I'm assuming for some of those a days. good bit of it yeah he and brenda both you can't can you improvise in that oh yeah, yeah. Mm. okay well yeah because first of all the script is not word for word what right. he and brenda said mm -hmm. all the time Right, like that script was written uh, predominantly by my friend John Gunn, who is now uh, the head of story at John Irwin. John and Andy Irwin have Kingdom Story, uh, Kingdom Story, I think that's their company. Anyway, they did American Underdog and lots of other things. But John Gunn um, is one of, has been one of their writer directors, producers, kind of in house, and he's an incredibly talented writer. By the mm -hmm. way, wrote American Underdog, wrote this other movie, Amer Unbreakable Boy, wrote a movie that's coming that out right now. Called, was that? I remember that one. That one, Unbreakable. Oh, yes, because you almost did Unbreakable you almost Boy, did you jerk. I almost did it. Got anyway, away. Anyway, yeah. um, but Drew <laughs> Powell was fantastic, so thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, and he's also got a new movie, Ordinary Angels, that's coming out with Hilary Swank. I think it's coming out right now. So yeah. anybody, everybody go see that movie. I, uh, I've, I've heard wonderful things. I have not yet uh, been able to see it, but John Gunn is a fantastic writer-director. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he wrote, a, he wrote a great script based on interviews that he saw with them or this, that, or the other, but it was no, none of it was like verbatim, mm, curt, mm -hmm. you know, unless it was even, I think even the, uh, some post game interview things weren't even verbatim. Mm -hmm. So I could still kind of improv within being curt, yeah. but it didn't mean there wasn't a weird pressure of like, right. I'm supposed to be this human being. Yeah. Cause that's not normal. That's Cause a, it's yeah. a very strange thing. There's this weird pressure on me. I'm about to go play Garrett Morris in this, um, in the SNL 1975. Movie. Congratulations, by Thank the way. That's very much. super cool. Yeah. That is super cool. But you know, there, when I read the script, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like it's, I, in my mind, I go, oh, I can be a little bit loose with the character, um, because it's SNL, it's backstage, everybody's loose, everybody's kind of doing yeah. their own thing when they get prepped for the show. But then I thought, man, this man is alive. Mm. This man, like, what if I improvise something that makes the cut? And he's like, man, I'd never say that bullshit. <laughs> you know, I feel this weird pressure yeah. that, you know, he's watching yeah. and will be disappointed yeah. in some of my off the cuff choices. You know, I, I from get, a from yeah. going back to drinking buddies real quick from a audience like viewer standpoint, to me, those scenes that you were talking about with Jake and Olivia, they come off so natural. One, because, you know, they are kind of improvising, yeah. but you have like a starting point and you know where you need to get to at the end of the scene. So it's like, let's yeah. get there organically. And I think it, from a non-acting standpoint uh, on screen, it comes off very natural as opposed to, like you said, some people who are so strict and trying to get their line out and it's, you're like, Oh, okay. These people are acting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can feel that energetically. Yeah. You can see it on screen. And what's really interesting is that there are, and, and, and by the way, obviously this is all very subjective and, mm -hmm. Who the fuck am I or any of it's us, to, you know, right. But mm -hmm. you can see, you can see on screen. There are a lot of actors, working actors, successful working actors mm -hmm. that are acting. Yeah. And they're acting the whole time. And mm -hmm. that's part of even maybe why they got hired because yeah. whatever the character is needs to almost feel not as authentic or not as real, yeah. but needs to be more of this 
whatever the heck it is. Yeah. Oh, and and also the director knows that they can mold that actor to do exactly what they want. Like mm -hmm. I want you to, you know, say these exact lines mm -hmm. and move exactly here and do it in this way. Mm -hmm. And I will get exactly, you know, I will conduct exactly how I need to conduct. Whereas mm -hmm. actors who let's say, are able to dive more deeply into a character and become that character, method act, whatever, the Daniel Day-Lewis or the Christian mm -hmm. Bale, or you know, I, I think I, I try to, or you try to, or mm -hmm. other people try to aspire to be, or maybe a, there's a balance in all of that. Because also with a lot of method acting, like they don't ever, like they don't leave it at work. <laughs> they yeah, bring yeah. it home oh, and all yeah. that. And like, I'm not that. Like I, yeah. I, I, I would love, to, I love diving into characters, but I like keeping that shit at work at and then work, being yeah. able to, you know, oh, by the way, and even at work, I like being able to go cut and then turn that shit off yeah. and be back to being Zach. So long as, you know, like if it's a super emotional scene, well, maybe I'll keep playing some moody music and not be talking to right. folks just to stay in that. Mm -hmm. But by and large, you know, particularly if you're doing comedy, like. Uh, I got a question for yeah. you, Zach. Um, were you in an on-air TV pilot starring legendary thong song singer Cisco? Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> oh, explain. Oh, yes, I was. Do tell. Um, Do tell. Um, I don't know what an on-air television pilot is, but... Unaired, sorry. Oh, unaired. 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 Oh, unaired. 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 Maybe I said it wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Um, yeah, so, so I started auditioning in 99, mm -hmm. like summer of 99. Oh. The, the, the following pilot season, which was now, I guess, you know, March of 2000, mm -hmm. I got cast in a pilot called Just Married, which was written by this wonderful uh, writer and human named Jack Burdett, who's won lots of awards on 30 Rock and all these various things. It was kind of based on his life where he got married real young. Chris okay. Evans, by the way, was the lead guy of that pilot. And really? Leah Moreno and Kristen Coppin, Jeff Stoltz and myself and Charlie Finn. Oh, wow. It was a really amazing little, we had a, a wonderful time and I'm still friends with some of them to this day. And then that didn't get picked up. And then a whole year went by and I didn't work. I was auditioning and getting close, but mm -hmm. still, you know, bussing tables and working at a car wash in Ventura. And then in the spring of 2001, I got cast in another NBC. That was an NBC multi-camera pilot. And here's, here comes another. Because also, by the way, the only wor work I could really book was multi-camera because I was coming out of theater and I was still yeah. so big. Oh, I was all here. <laughs> you worked at a car wash? <laughs> oh, for a, t a couple years. You yeah. had to be the tallest dude to ever work at a car wash. We got another Hummer in here. Get Zach to go <laughs> wash the top. You know what? Honestly, bro, I wish it was that logical. Yeah. I always hoped that my bosses would be like, listen, we got tall ass Zach over here. Let's mm. just make sure we're using him to get to the tops of, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, we would rotate through shifts. And sometimes you were on vacuums and you'd, sometimes you were on like prep. And then sometimes you were on getting inside the car to do the inside mm -hmm. of the windows. And I'd be like, I'm six, four. You want me to get in the back of this hatchback <laughs> and go do this when yeah. I could be drying the town? I've got to do it. <laughs> they were wasting Idiot. your talent. Wasting my talents. Yeah. Um, so yeah. anyway, so 2001, mm -hmm. I book another multi-camera pilot. And this time it was, <laughs> man, it was so wacky. <laughs> it was so wacky. It was um, the untitled Bob Newhart and Cisco <laughs> pilot <laughs> that they wanted. They wanted it to be like the new Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Basically, they thought that Cisco could be the new Will Smith. Oh, that's Because it was right around the time of his big, you know, and by the way, and, 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 you know, not for nothing, but like Will, I think is a, quite a talented actor hmm. now. Yeah, but when he started, he was fresh. He was green. Yeah. He, you know, yeah. if you go back and watch old Fresh Prince and all that stuff, like he was, he, would, he wasn't a green. He note. would read lines with his scene partners, and if you could, if you looked at Will Smith, he was he was mouthing, mouthing. their lines. Yeah, that's uh, how he could memorize yeah. both. Yeah, yeah, you know. Interesting. Sides. So, yeah. so anyway, so I was like, okay, you know, and I'm a baby coming up in this business. I'm like, okay, cool, Bob Newhart, Bob Newhart. And by the mm -hmm. way, who had been retired for years at this point, but was like, I need to make some money, and so. So that that was so. So the premise was this. The premise was, and by the way, the premise changed every single day over the mm -hmm. course of making this pilot. Like we had four, five people that were uh, uh, fired right out of like the table read because it was changing that rapidly. <laughs> Jeez. But the premise, the the essential premise was, Cisco was a was a like peanut vendor at Camden Yards in Baltimore because I think he's from Baltimore originally. Okay, yeah. What is this show? And y'all, and a fly ball gets hit up into <laughs> no. the stands and there's a ball going toward like some little kid and Cisco sees it 
He's not obviously he's not Cisco the you know Cisco Cisco right. but he's you know whatever his character's name was and he sees it because he's the peanut vendor and he sees it he's like oh no I gotta save this kid and so he runs and he jumps and he, and he grabs the ball and he saves the kid but in doing so he's starting to tumble over like the mezzanine like you know the the, yeah. the, the rail and he yeah. tumbles over the rail and he's holding on with one hand and he's got the ball in the other and he just saved this kid and the cameras get it all and so he becomes this overnight sensation mm. and so then Hollywood comes knocking and is like we want to make you a star kid yeah. we're gonna put you in, in, in the, TV in the, in the pictures in pictures we're gonna put you in and the so pictures create, <laughs> so they create so they create a show in a show the show oh. was the show was Cisco becoming thrown into stardom on a sitcom in a sitcom starring Bob Newhart as Bob Newhart. Whoa. G guys, it was so meta. This, this was like Inception like Deep. This yeah, was like, what? we were going there. More meta than those glasses. Way more, <laughs> way more meta than those glasses. And uh, Keenan Thompson, this is how Keenan and I first became bros. We worked in this on this pilot together. And then you did Wieners together. And then we did Wieners, wieners together, together later, <laughs> which was... So wacky, one of the wackiest <laughs> things I've ever done. But also a really incredible little adventure that he and I and Fran Kranz, who's a wonderful dude and talent, also got to do together. But tangent. So I started originally, my character, it was like Keenan was his brother or cousin. Uh, there, was, there were like three girls, mm -hmm. Jennifer Morrison and uh, two other girls, or maybe even three. And there were like love interests and things. And then I played his, one of his best friends back from Baltimore who was like a dentist I think originally, and but I was mm. out in LA, and he somehow gets his sick pad right out of the <laughs> right out of the gate. He gets his sick pad in LA, this cool like house set, and then it was like, well, I guess maybe I won't go back to Baltimore, and I'll stay here and kind of be in this circle. And so this was how it started. And then over the course of the week, while they're just constantly just rewriting everything, I went from being his dentist, his buddy who was a dentist, to his buddy who was a doctor, to his buddy who was a lawyer to his buddy who was an agent, to his agent who wasn't his buddy at all. But I was the one who was like, all right, kid, we're going to put you in the pictures. Oh, and in this time, these other girls get fired. Jennifer stays <laughs> on. They rehired, they hired somebody else. I don't know. It was a shit show, to say the very least. And we made the pilot. Have you and, seen it? And shocker, it didn't get picked up. Wow. I didn't believe it. <laughs> Have you seen it? Oh, of course I saw it. Oh, Bro, both those pilots, Just Married and then the untitled Bob Newhart Cisco pilot. This, this? I watched them both. And of course, in my 19, 20 year old mind, I'm thinking, we got it, guys. Yes. <laughs> we got it. Only upon retrospect do I look at those things, and not, and not very far after did I was I able to look at me like, yeah, that was never gonna, mm. that was never gonna fly. Speaking yeah. of which, there's a, uh, and ironically enough, a, a fan question that relates somewhat to that. Can you sing any one of Cisco's classics? Just a few bars. She had dumps like a truck, truck, mm. truck. Guys mm. like what, mm. what, what? Mm. Baby movie, but, mm. but, but. Oh, I think mm. I sing it again. Mm. She had dumps mm. like a truck, mm. truck, truck. Guys like what, Damn. what, mm -hmm. what? Oh, baby mm -hmm. movie, but, but, but. but, uh, but. Oh, wow. that thong, 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 thong. thong. <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> the video, the video. The video is the video was Whoa. Oh, bro, that, that video was. For a young by, by kid. Way, and, and, I'm, and not going to lie, on my liked songs playlist for years, the thong song has hey. resided. Oh, <laughs> let's go. Because it's one of those ridiculous zeitgeisty songs that I know whenever it randomly pops up, when it plays, everybody who's listening goes, oh, this yeah. one. This Which, one. Everybody has that reaction. What's crazy is that <laughs> as much as I make fun of that song. It's iconic. I it slaps. I had a, a Walkman. What do you call it? A Discman? I a thought you were about to say a When I was in high school. Wore. I mean, I used to wear thongs based yeah. off the song. I didn't yeah. know that, you know, yeah, yeah. it was uh, Did you want to dump like a truck? Yeah, I used yeah, to have not? cakes. I used yeah. to have cakes, but I've been in the gym. I, de I deflated these cakes. My point is, when I was in high school, I had the Discman. Yeah. And the anti-skip, too. So you can drop oh, yeah. that motherfucker. It would still play the thong song. I left it in the science lab, right? Went to my next period, realized, oh, I left Shit. it, went back, gone. Of course. Walk, the, the, the discman there, thong song, no longer inside. <laughs> wow. It was shocking to me that someone was like, yeah, 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 I must have this so much so that I will steal it. Well, also, like looking at the prime opportunity to steal the actual player 
which even if they didn't need, they could have mm. sold, they could have whatever. But they're like, they're like, I'm going to let this person keep the player. Yes. <laughs> but I want that fucking thong. So want I want that Cisco. Thong. You know what just hit me is your guys' pilot was ahead of its time because essentially it was entourage with Cisco being a peanut vending, fly ball catching, viral Hollywood star. I guess so. Yeah. I guess I never watched Entourage, so I don't know what the like Ooh. the premise, like how it started or how. Same thing, yeah. Literally just started like that. Well, no, no, no. But really, like, how does he get discovered? How does how does Vincent Chase? Yeah, I think he, he's just gonna do the movie. Yeah, that's always the thing. Vinny's gonna, gonna do, do the, the movie. movie. He started as an indie actor uh, with his boys in Queens. Queens and, Boulevard. Yeah, they made a movie, a little indie film that got all this hype. And then it brought him out to L.A. Right. And then at that point, it was like, is he an indie darling? Is he a big movie star? Well, he's surrounded by models. His yep. agent's Ari Manuel, right. Ari Gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, what's this life going to be like? And that's kind of how it started. And every episode, I feel like, and I, I loved Entourage, but every episode was... I think Vinny's going to do the movie. Yeah. Hey! And at the end, they'd all Does celebrate. he ever actually do a movie in the entire yeah. show? I think yeah, he does <laughs> Aquaman. Aquaman. Aquaman was a big oh, okay. one. okay. And he then did he do, did okay. uh, Pablo yeah. Escobar, okay. which that, that wasn't yeah. a hit. Because it would have been pretty funny if maybe the entire series, it was always him going <laughs> to do, do the do movie. Because <laughs> that's way more Hollywood <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. like just yeah. talking about, talking yeah. about, talking about doing the movie. You ever look at somebody's Ooh. IMDb and there's like 50 coming, like, in projects? Yeah. And everyone's like, what? Yeah, are they really? Yeah, no. You know what I mean? You're almost done. Okay. You know, let's get back into the silliness of life. Yeah. You you do excellent impressions. That's right. You do We've heard a few. I've seen a few. We, I've seen a few. You know, what's interesting is that you both do Christopher Walken. Now, a lot of people say they can do Christopher Walken. I've heard both. Excellent. Thanks. Do you notice who's behind me? I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love this guy. It's your father's watch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did I did I did you see on Fallon? I did uh it's this thing that I've just always fucked with for years because it just always I just found the idea funny like if celebrities also do each other yeah right. and so that's why on Fallon I was like I always just thought it was funny because everyone has a Schwarzenegger and everyone has a walk-in yeah but what if Schwarzenegger has a, a walk-in and yeah. vice versa so 100%. Yeah, that's that that's, that's the, the funny those are the funny riffs for me but all walk-in is so iconic mm -hmm. because he great. just has such a specific cadence of, of you know the punctuation moving and shit like that mm -hmm. also i think he's been really smart in that he has chosen roles over his career mm -hmm. i think they're basically all based on that's a movie <laughs> of a monologue <laughs> for me <laughs> it's that and if it does then he and it's a really well written it. monologue. Mm -hmm. Then he does the fucking movie. It doesn't even oh, yeah. matter who's in it or how much money or whatever. It's like, yeah, I gotta sing. You know, his monologue in uh, the pool hall junkies. Pool yeah, hall yeah, junkies yeah, yeah. was one of my. I favorite. haven't seen that one. Oh my gosh, I love it though because you do the high walk in and then you do the Frank. Yeah. Wait, where are you going? Frank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whispers, <laughs> Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going? Yeah, yeah. Where uh, are you going? Okay, my so son bought me a Cadillac. <laughs> I think that deserves a toast. <laughs> I love that scene. So Denzel, Macho Man, and Walken, they're at Disneyland. So you're Denzel? Uh, yeah. I'm Macho Man? Yeah. And you're, oh, he's oh. Chris Walken? Okay. Yeah, they're, right. they're in line at Disneyland. Hold on, I got to take and, a sip uh, of water for they're this. They're in line for Space Mountain. <laughs> um, it's yeah. line. It's long. <laughs> it's too long. Oh, well, what's the matter? Huh? Should have got one of those plaids. <laughs> you know... For the line. For the mountain. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the problem, huh? Your back hurt? Huh? Yeah. We've done two films together and already you're telling me your back is giving out? I've never seen this part of you before. I've never seen that, huh? Gotta get an easy pass. Yeah. Let me tell you something here, man. Gotta wait in front of all these kids. Yeah. Need the easy pass. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I do indeed believe the children are the future. So we sit here, we learn, we observe. Huh? We I miss take the this old one. Now. The old one was better. You know, <laughs> that's not true. I love the music now. Yeah. You're in it, the rocket. <laughs> music. Soundtrack. <laughs> it makes it better. Get a lot of, I'm into, oh, I almost you, just wanted, I'm doing walking. Oh, yeah, we can <laughs> trade. Ooh, let me do it. Got a lot of haters then. Don't need them now. Yeah. Okay, this line is this, this line is really fucking with me, huh? Huh? You motherfuckers think you can do this to me? You think you can have me waiting in line for two hours just so I can see space? <laughs> Damn it! If I want to see space, I'll call Christopher Nolan and tell him to replace my son in a movie with me. Huh? <laughs> 
the best. That's what I do. That's exactly what I do. Huh? It's so good. <laughs> you know, really, at the end of the day, the ride is just a bunch of right-hand turns. <laughs> It really is. It's one left in the beginning. The yeah. rest of the rights. <laughs> it's fun, but it's like NASCAR. Okay, it looks like we're up. Mm? Mm. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun talking right. to you guys. I want the back. <laughs> I take the back. <laughs> well done, my friend. Hey. That was awesome. Well done. This has been such a pleasure getting to, to, to speak to you. We yeah, speak man. all the time, but yeah. on, in different forms. Yeah. And little we, yeah. we hang out here and there, and you speak about other things, but this is very insightful, and it opens us up and the fans up to... Uh, to you, yeah, you know, and your objective, and hopefully people learned a lot uh, on this episode. But before we go, yeah, and listen, yeah. I got a, I got a gift for you. Yeah, if you look under your seat, mm. oh, it's the Oprah thing under your seat. He's doing yeah. the Oprah thing again. Let's see, is it? Yeah, it might be a little difficult. It, it's a hard fit. Oh, go that's with, what she said. <laughs> Never said that with me. The- what? That's, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Take that back. Cut that part. <laughs> Hold on a second. It was very Christmassy. Yeah, Do you have a guess what it could be? Come on. Frank. We have what a you doing? Feastables. Frank. Feastables. We have a box. What is this? It's a gift, special it's a gift. Cougar. It's a cougar. It's a cougar. It's I thought a it was. Paper. Come on. I thought it's it was chocolate. a Jacksonville Jaguar. Big fangs. You know. Where are you going, Frank? Mm. Oh, Mr. Beast's uh, situation. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, word. Mr. Beast sent over some chocolate. He's not paying us for this, by the way. He just randomly sent a box of chocolates over. And because I'm on a diet and I'm training for something, I can't eat it. But we got you chocolates if you would like to partake. Well, I don't really eat a lot of this stuff either. Mm. Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate it. Maybe you should just leave mm. it here for people to have. I am. Chocolatey bar. <laughs> Yes. By the way, I love. <laughs> Come on, Zach, eat the damn Come chocolate. On, good. What eat are you them. doing? It's fantastic chocolate. I love it. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I love that I haven't seen you for a minute, and that I finally get to see you, and I get to be on your podcast. Which, by the way, I really appreciate. I love, mm-hmm. I love podcasts in general. It's like it's yeah. the best because when you do talk shows, it's like five, five minutes, minutes of yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's all that. Um, but mm-hmm. I love that we finally got together and all this, and I get a regift. This is yes. peak Lamorne right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not good with get gifts, that regift, but I'm good with regift. <laughs> yeah, and also. I give you the gift, but I kindly ask you to leave it on yeah, your yeah. way out. Yeah, yeah, when totally. the camera well, shut that's off, what I'm doing. Yes, and I appreciate you. You're way no, ahead yeah, of it. T- but thank you, Mr. Beast. Uh, <laughs> yes, and indeed. Thank you, Lamorne. Hopefully, Mr. Beast will sponsor our podcast. Yes, indeed. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Zachary Levi, you are officially off of the Lamorne after. 